So guys, I am super excited because this car has looked so stock for so long and I like, I haven't wanted to take pictures of it or anything. We also got a set of wheels, so I'll, I'll talk about that in the next video uh, and we'll do that in the next video. But I'm really excited because this car has been so stock that like when I take pictures of it, I feel stupid because it looks like a stock legacy with a front mount. And it's just not really that cool to take pictures of. So I'm really happy that I got this set of BCs because it's going to allow us to lower the car, make it look better, get that stance where we want it. And then I do have some other exterior stuff as well, aside from the wheels uh, that should be coming in the next day or so. A lot of stuff planned for this car and hopefully the end result's going to look really nice and something we'll be able to be proud of. I like sedans and wagons oh? as well. Oh! No, I thought you just liked all wagons. I mean, any wagon's cool, it's very useful, but it's not like I prefer everything in a wagon form just because I happen to own two wagons. If anyone says I should have used a jack, I'm a man. I don't use jacks for shit. So I always, at least when I'm starting out doing coilovers on anything, I like to have that center line right there so I know that it's currently camber neutral as far as what the eccentric bolt can do. That'll help me with being able to get the adjustment up top where I want it and do micro adjustments down here. Mainly for stuff like the wheel touching this if it did or the wheel too far out. If I have to make really small adjustments, I would use this. Otherwise, I normally leave it neutral. get these on, I'm essentially just going to check, see where they're at, and I'll make adjustments afterwards. They've already got preload set, I already checked that, so from initial install, we'll see where the drop is and we'll adjust from there. The fronts are straightforward because they're linear, being a McPherson design, the back you actually have to take out less than you think because with the trailing arm setup like this one has or any trailing arm Subarus, some models have the spring behind the wheel. So you'll see, say if this is rear of the car, you'll see spring set up here and your trailing arm here and your hub here. You have to take out more than you expect to get the drop you want because it's angles. So if I'm here and I want this to go up an inch, this has to go up like an inch and a half. Whereas if your spring is set up like a BP chassis and it's in front of the hub like this, to get this to go up an inch or essentially lower the car an inch, this only has to go about half to three quarters of an inch. So small adjustments on that make a big difference. So if you're sitting there and you're adjusting it and you notice when you're first doing your height adjustment 
on an install, you're like, oh shoot, you know, I want to be at this height, but there's no way I can take that much out of the coilover. You're probably looking at it wrong, and when you're when you're lowering it and adjusting it, you're gonna set it on the ground, maxed out, and it's gonna be two inches lower than you thought it'd be. And that all comes down to just the geometry of how these are all set up. The other side I had to really forcibly lift up on that because I was fighting against nothing holding this up. Now we got the sway bar at least assisting in lifting this. Should make this side a decent amount easier. You would hope. Look at that. Got my bar. So you may find this weird. This is always how I've done this. I don't know why I'm trying, I was trying to do this artsy thing where I don't really talk much and I just do this, but instead I'm talking this whole time. Which is kind of what I wasn't going for, but I'm sure you guys probably like me talking a little bit so it's not just dead silent. Alright, so giving you guys a better view on this side, so these are the little tick marks I'm talking about on the eccentric bolt. So it's like a whole radius for positive or negative camber adjustment in this, what the full spectrum of that is on this eccentric bolt. You've got the far end on one side, far end on the other side. I like to match it just right in the middle, so I know I can go either way, uh, and I'm just dead centered on what this eccentric bolt can do. So I think I'm gonna test fit one of the new wheels. So I guess I can show you that. From there we can figure out how much we wanna drop this once we get it on the ground with the other stuff. But I'm not gonna do a full setup on this until I have the new wheels and tires on the car. Cause obviously things are gonna change from where we have it currently. These are gonna be dope, but we're gonna have to make them fit a bit. <laughs> I know the rear's gonna be fine because I test fit Tanner's 1552s on this car and they're the same exact width, offset, everything. So I know the rears look great. The fronts are probably gonna stick out a little bit, but we can add some camber. It's never bad to have a little bit of camber in the front. And I like it. So, I'm not going to touch base a whole lot. This is kind of a little spoiler here. You've probably seen the reel, potentially, or the short, whatever platform you want to watch it on. But yeah, we partnered with 1552 for the wheels on this. You know what? I'm giving too much information. I'll touch base on this in the next video. You know what? Now's as good a time as ever to do an update for the wagon boys. So I'm installing this Cusco rear bar, the little carbon fiber one. Uh, same one I have in Chewy. You don't necessarily have to take these off. I recommend taking these off when you're doing the rear struts, or at least pulling them away. That's where you've got movement out of them and you can pull them out. Because these really get in the way of getting those two bolts back here. So if you're able to pull that away and get to it better, especially if you're going to be putting on like the extenders or anything like that, because the extender is going to come up like right here and you're going to drill a hole for that. So what I do when I install these or anything like it, I'm going to take this off, leave the bar off. You just install uh, the mount piece. And then last thing I'll do after I get everything buttoned up is put this bar in. One thing I do want to note, at least for the Cusco, you do have to make two little slits just for this part of this bar 
and that's going to be in that foam piece right there. So let me get the focus. It's going to be like right here in the foam piece. So I just leave the foam piece as is when I do this. I push down pretty hard on it where it's supposed to go and it'll make an indentation. And then I just kind of notch it a little bit for those to fit in. When you're taking these side panels off, there's a couple of pieces that come out. So I want to touch base on those. So if you guys ever get yourself into a situation where let's say you're running like I have on this side, you're running like the extra cables for a fuel system behind there, sub wiring. I don't want you breaking your piece because you don't know what to take off. So just going over things, I pull this out. This guy comes out, the panel that's right here. You take the lower pieces out on this side this lower piece needs to come out and then what you'll do after you have those guys out you can see that it kind of goes over this uh, and this side lays underneath that panel so where all the screws are that you're going to need to hit for this there is one here there's going to be one on each one of these little anchors so little guy there little guy there um, one hidden behind this guy just right through there and then the one that most people forget and they wind up breaking the panel there is one underneath the little trim piece for the tonneau cover so do not forget that one that one goes straight down you can see i still have it in i'll take that out and then i'm going to pull these away if you are fully taking these panels out you'll want to take this guy off and i believe there's another nut underneath here a bolt that's holding in this front panel so I shouldn't need to fully take them out, but yeah, lower seat cover, not there. Check out this trim panel. I, if I remember correctly, there's something under there as well. And that trim panel there. So I like to do both sides at once. That way you're not having to mess with loading one side, unloading the other side, trying to pull something up. That's how I was able to do the fronts without like using, a lot of people use a jack to push up on that. I was able to just use my leg. So I'm not fighting with one strut that's way longer than the coilover and them fighting between the two on the sway bar. So yeah, I'm gonna do the other side now. Hopefully I don't have to loosen all this stuff up like I did. I did some stuff in the background, so there you go. We're almost done. Now we can lower this thing down and bask in the glory of mittens with way less wheel gap. Hey. These are stupid. Get these out of here. You probably can't see me. Let me move this. As I was saying, this is gonna get the rear extenders and it has that Cusco rear bar. I'm gonna put the extenders on first and I'm gonna show you a little trick that way you're not drilling a bigger hole than you need to. Because trust me, the first time I ever did this with extenders, I drilled way bigger of a hole than I needed to and it looks like shit. These are the rear coilovers. Unlike the fronts, they are not side specific. These are the extenders. The Allen key is to loosen these off just on here. And then you would fit it over this like that and you would tighten this down. You can either put this on once you get the coilover up into place or you can put this on first. I put this on afterwards last time and that required me to stupidly make a hole this big or I think I actually I snaked it through so I had a hole this big. What you can do and I'm not sure if a lot of other people know this but I didn't think to check at the time you can actually use the Allen key in the top of this and take that off. So that way you're only making a hole this size. So I'm going to make the hole first before I even fiddle with getting this in. Because I know the hole is going to be directly between these two mounting bolts straight up. So if I drill that, I know this is going to come out like that. Then I can attach this beforehand, slide this all through and guide it through the hole. Uh, in that panel. Then once it goes through there, I'm only gonna have a hole this big, it's gonna look really good, and then I can slide this piece back on and tighten it down, which is a hell of a lot easier than trying to reach underneath the panel to tighten this guy onto the top adjustment knob. 
So that's how I do that. It'll make it look a lot cleaner than drilling a massive hole in the panel. So I'm gonna drill that hole, then we'll get to putting these in. Oh my head. Alright, so now I've got both the rear extender sheets, or the rear extender, what the fuck you call them? I have them pressed down to where they're sticking out the bottom. So what that's going to allow me to do is when I put in both the rear coilovers, I'll already have the extenders on there. I'll be able to slide that into the bottom of those, and then as I work it up, it's going to seat itself properly, so I won't have to mess with anything down there when I get it in. Alright, so I got this bar all disassembled. I actually have the same exact bar in Chewy, the Outback, uh, the carbon fiber wrap, all that. But the bar that I have in Chewy came from Cusco USA. Got it off Rally Sport Direct. This one I got via import from Ethan Nakaya, so thank you, Ethan. And it's funny because this says Furonto, so I know that this needs to face the front. And I wouldn't know that unless I was taking Japanese, so thanks, Duolingo. And we are through the Cusco up top, so I'm gonna just kinda tighten this bolt on here. So it's super easy, and you can just put that adjuster up top. This is the part about this whole thing that kind of sucks because it's very hard to get these nuts on here and as you can see with this Cusco setup you don't really have a way to take this panel off so it does kind of complicate things a little and this is where patience is just kind of your friend so you can probably skip to the next part when you see me again, this will be over. Can you tell me where my 14 is? It does fit. Oh my God, how would that happen? So what I do here is I line that up and see where that's going to hit. And then I just hit down. It may seem very archaic, but I swear this is like the best way that I found out how to do it. Line that up. I flip it up and I can see where I smacked into and that's where I'm just gonna cut. There you go. Got the Cusco rear bar in. I just gotta reassemble the entire hatch area. And then we can put wheels on it, drop it to the ground and see what it looks like. than I was expecting. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna sink more than that. Damn mittens. You can fucking slam today. Is it riding on the bump stop? I really hope it's not. Uh, yeah, that is like, why the hell? That is very low. Oh God. I don't think it is, but it's kind of hard to really say here or there. You know, I'm gonna say we're not quite there yet, but we are damn close. That does not look... Yeah, we've got maybe an inch of travel. 
I don't know if I can show you guys that. There's bump stop. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take those out. We can go test it. Either way, these will come up because the tire profile is gonna be bigger and it'll come out more. Okay. I think the funniest thing is Sam drives this car too. So this car is about to be like way too low for her. So uh, you can hear the exhaust rattle too that I really need to fix. It's just heat shields. I should have done that actually. I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have just crawled under there and fixed the heat shields that are rattling. Because that shit's really annoying. I might lift it up and do that real quick. Hi right, guys. I'm taking Phoenix to go get a puppuccino to celebrate mittens getting slammed on its nuts. What'd you think? He's like, well, it was a lot easier. It was a lot easier to get into, Dad. And it did not require as much skill in jumping. That's good to hear, Phoenix. We did a good job. Uh, sick. All right, guys, so now the next thing that we're going to do is get those wheels on. So tomorrow, I would assume, what time is it, four o'clock? Damn, I might be able to do that today. So I'll probably grab those wheels and tires and drop them off at like discount tires somewhere, have them mounted up, and then I can do my next video, getting those things test fitted on, and then doing, I'll probably do a string alignment on this, to be honest. I know you guys have been really wanting a video so I'll edit this and get this one out, and then... What the fuck? ESPN. Always.